Greetings. What's up, everybody? Good to see you. I got crazy. I got a lot of natural light today. Let's, uh, whoop. There we go. How are you? Good to see you. Come on in. Say hello. Where are you from today? What's going on? Where are you? How's the weather? What's up, Patrick? Good to see you. I see David Powers in here. <clears throat> hey, Ania, how's it going? Angela, good to see you. Angie Coley. What's up, Carrie Carr? Good to see you. Hey, everybody. Cindy Childress in the house. Superstars. Elon Marie. What's up, Elon? <clears throat> what's going on with my voice? I'm losing my voice. James, what's going on, my man? Jay Jackson in the hot seat today. Good to see you, Jay. Just looking at your stuff. Going to be a good one. Jody. Wow. Everybody's here. Good to see you. Laura, hello. Linda. Mike Lucas. Hey, Mike Check. Have you guys checked out Mike Check yet? Mike uh, Lucas just started a new column. I think it's going to be weekly. Uh, it's in the going pro section. It's uh, about his freelance experience and uh, fun, man. Mike is just a, a great writer, a uh, former comedian like myself. Super fun and insightful to read Mike's stuff. Check out the Mike Check. What is up, everybody? So good to see all of you. Um, yes, uh, go to all panelists and attendees when you go to comment. Otherwise, I only see it and I don't get to see it because I'm busy talking. So we got a, a packed show today. I'm going to move quick. And <clears throat> I want to dig into some threads. And there's a lot of cool stuff happening. What a, what a week, right? Um, two uh, big uh, train. Actually, this is my fourth live uh, event here this week. Um, we did uh, uh, Escape Velocity is in full swing. And we did uh, uh, module number two on Wednesday. Fantastic all about diving deeper into the money skills. Anybody in EV, raise your hand, say hello, let everybody know what's up. Happen inside of Escape Velocity uh, with my co-coach, Rachel Mazza. Uh, set, having a lot of fun, man, the accountability in there and everybody like being so supportive of each other. And this week, uh, ne and over the next two week stretch, we get to dig in and start writing, working on the craft, coming away with a, a sample that we can be super proud of so we're, uh, confident to go pitch our skills. Um, awesome. J Jason's loving EV. Um, Angela's in there. Yes, yes. Um, so um, that's exciting. And then on Wednesday, I did my new uh, webinar called uh, Prospectors, Partners, and Pioneers. Hopefully you had a chance to uh, check that out. If not, the replay is up for you in Copy Chief. Uh, that was the promotional uh, webinar for the Copy Chief membership. But what I do on those is uh, I don't like to do just straight up kind of manipulative webinars that are really only there to lead you to the pitch. I like to, I'm a teacher, man. I like to teach. I love to coach. I love to share uh, this journey we're all on. And, and if I'm a couple of clicks further down the road than most people uh, and there's certainly there's a lot of people, many clicks ahead of me that I look to for wisdom. And, and we all just learn together. And to me, it's all about always just sharing. And uh, I hope that was a valuable webinar for, for you guys. I talked a lot about the how copywriting is changing. It's really changing a lot. And it, to me, it's, it's damn exciting, the changes. Uh, and so check out that training. Um, because man, the advantages are ours these days. Uh, we have to understand, you know, especially online with the thing that has changed so much is the, the platforms, the tech. Uh, now, you know, we are at the mercy of uh, their platforms, their rules. And as we all know, and this has been the case, this is not a new thing with, with Facebook that, you know, uh, people's ads get, banned and they get ejected from the platform. It's been happening for years and years um, on Google. And, you know, we used to call it the Google slap or they would come in and change the algorithm and everybody's ads would just all their, all their, all their engagement and other organic search cred would go out the window and it was devastating to businesses. Um, but it's how it is, right? Any, any, anywhere, we purchase advertising can change the rules at any time. Uh, what we need to do is understand what that platform uh, re re rewards instead of uh, uh, re rebukes. And 
man, you know, people out there trying to sell you the, the, the hack, cracking the code, all that kind of horse shit. It, it's temporary at best, man. Uh, the smartest people I know, particularly in, in like Facebook marketing, I'm talking about Mike Renard, Sean Twing, people like this consistently say, uh, it, you're out of your mind if you think you're going to game the system, get away with anything, uh, that, you know, protect your account like it's one of your greatest assets in life. Uh, because it is, because uh, if you think you're just going to start a, a new account with a different email address and they don't get know that, I mean, forget it, man. Um, uh, so you got to learn the rules and play by the rules and sure, push the envelope, be bold, be daring, but you know what? Be creative, be creative. And that is, that is why in Copy Chief, I think what makes us so special and the reason that uh, people regard a copy chief copywriter all of you as something special and why they pay good money and fly long distances to come meet you at uh copy chief live and they want to get to know you inside of this platform is because you come to this with integrity and you understand uh that if we're really good at what we do and we uh, study our craft um, and, and understand what makes us particularly good at copywriting, at, at communicating, at sharing our message, at inspiring our, our audience to want to come do business with us. And we can then do that for our clients as well. That is the ultimate advantage. It isn't some, some BS hack or trick or, you know, ugh. it just doesn't it turn. It just makes me nauseous. Um, uh, the, the, the biz -oppy kind of claims and promises and manipulations. And it, it's just, it all comes from a place of fear and you can smell it. And trust me, if you sense that somebody's full of crap, you're probably right. It, you know, don't ignore that instinct to see it, someone's pattern and see that they're not following through on their word and they're not delivering what they promised and the facts of their lives as they announce them don't seem to add up. And you know, like somebody will announce some, some big win that they had or some big thing that's coming up and all of a sudden, eh, you don't hear so much about that anymore. And they expect you to not wonder why. You just, oh, we'll just move on and keep talking and mention, say the next, well, you're like, if you're suspicious, Trust your instinct. Check people out. Who are you following? Who are you trusting? You know what I'm saying? Because the way to have no competition in this business is two things. Your integrity and your worldview, your DNA, the things that you are drawn to, that you decide to study, that you pay attention to, that you go deep on whether that's previous work experience, whether that's thing, things that you went along with and became sort of a, a proxy expert in because that was your first career. And even though you, know, you spent 20 years as an engineer and didn't particularly uh, have your heart in it, but you have a ton of knowledge, okay, that's something. And then it's all the stuff that you're super passionate about, music, books, uh, uh, outdoor activities, do you love the water? Do you love the ocean? Do you love to um, uh, uh, scale tall buildings without a rope? <laughs> Are you that guy, who, you know, uh, who stops traffic? Because once a year he climbs the, the Willis Tower with, you know, whatever you're into, man. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, that is your unique DNA. And the way to have no competition. And let me tell you something. That's why, that's why this is a long game that we're playing here. Copywriting, freelancing, this marketing business, this is not a quick win, I tell you, man. And anymore, and this is what I'm talking about with, with understanding the platforms and, and what motivates them and what drives them. And, and, you know, yeah, it's a perilous scenario and you can't predict all the changes and you, you know, but what you can do is hedge your bet in your favor by 
uh, staying on top of compliance, seeing the big picture, understanding what these companies are dealing with internally. You know, if, if Zuckerberg is about to get called before the Senate again to answer some hard questions, you can bet your ass that compliance is about to get even stricter. If you see a trend in uh, FTC lawsuits in certain industries, uh, you've got to pay attention to what the consequences of that are going to be because the, the leaders in those industries are uh, about to tighten up and change things and have to reinvent. And so here's the cool thing. Uh, when we only focus on the numbers, we only see the result. And the people achieving the highest numbers uh, are at the greatest risk of losing their way of doing what they're doing. And it's sometimes interesting and ironic that they need to revert back to finding a way to do things that they may have deemed too slow in the past. Uh, so for instance, if all you're focused on is front end acquisitions and you'll do and say anything you can to get people to uh, buy your low end front end product and become a name on your list, a, a, a customer in your file, and you've never uh, taken time to uh, study the art of nurturing a lead into your funnel. And how do we nurture? We nurture the same way we nurture any relationship with a value exchange, not a vague idea of, of, of value, dropped a value bomb, like literally consistently giving, consistently showing up, consistently, we talked about this on, on Laura Belgray's uh, uh, training yesterday, which wasn't that fantastic. Um, I told you, big week, right? Uh, we talked, Laura talked about uh, be prolific and mail a, a lot. She mails three times a week at least. And we talked about how that builds trust. Why does that build trust? Because Laura said she's gonna email you a lot and she's gonna share a lot of things with you. And she does it in a consistent way I try to do the same. I do it in a consistent way. Uh, uh, we both talked about how we find it difficult to write short emails because we just feel like we have so much we want to share with our, with our readers. And, uh, but people see that it's consistent. So they probably not going to read every single thing you send out, but they're going to see that it's there and they're going to be, all right, thank God Kev's here. Just like he said he would be, Laura's showing up. And when they do check in, they're, they're rewarded. They, they find value. Those are the things that you do that's an advantage that other people won't do. You see, if they're just in it for the quick hit, if they're just in it for the, the money grab, you know, they're like, uh, they're like, uh, they're, they're, they're muggers. The muggers. Watch out for the mug. Don't be a mugger. You're not a mugger. So if you ever feel like, oh man, I don't know, like maybe I'm supposed to be more aggressive or maybe I'm being too polite or maybe that person makes me feel crappy, but maybe I'm just supposed to get used to it and, and, and you know, no. Trust your instinct and your integrity and share what you're doing, what you're thinking, what, what you're learning. And I'm telling you, that's how you'll grow an audience. That's how you'll resonate. And that's how you'll get better consistently over time. Just trust yourself, trust the process. And that's what makes Copy Chiefs unique and different because that's our philosophy, that's our model. When we say nobody writes alone, what we mean is we have your back as a member of this family, as a part of this culture. And we'll help you sniff out the BS. You're allowed to question things in here and we can explore them and discuss them together. And nobody said any of this would be easy, but it doesn't have to be impossible and you don't have to feel stressed out and overwhelmed along the way because uh, we're all here to figure it out together and to raise each other up. Um, so definitely check out uh, Prospects, Prospectors, uh, uh, Partners and Pioneers. It's about the three different ways to go about growing your business, particularly as a freelancer, how to use copy as a product creator. We're going to talk to Jay today about his approach. He's starting to learn to communicate with his online audience and how that's resonating and how else he can improve that. Um, and so just remember, this is a long game, man. 
and you're doing it right, it's okay for it to take time. By the way, talking about starting just where you are, <laughs> my daughter, for, for whatever reason, was, was looking through my YouTube channel the other day. Hilarious. My daughter's 13. It's so funny to see your stuff through your kid's eyes. I'm very blessed that uh, my family's very close. We all love and respect each other. You know, we got our moments like, like any family, but there's a lot of love there and admiration just for each other as people. We're, we're just blessed, I guess, that we get along. We truly get along. And anyway, so my daughter, she was actually, uh, her, her motivation was, was selfish as most of ours are. She, she um, had found a video of her when she was like four years old doing the cup song. You, uh, most of the women probably know that, I forget the movie it was from, but it, where she plays the, it's like a percussion on a cup and uh, pitch perfect. Thank you, Alex. Of course, Alex would know. <laughs> anyway, it's a picture uh, uh, of Ange. Uh, a video of her doing that and, and oh, I was so sweet to see it and she has no front teeth and I remember shooting it and we did like five takes and uh, it just killed me but anyway you know I, it, 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 we were scrolling together through my old YouTube videos and, and I'm telling you man some of that early stuff whoo it was rough I did not have it dialed in <laughs> and I was thinking man I gotta I gotta share this with more people when I'm always like needling people to do more video and going, hey, you know, it, it, you're gonna evolve in real time and it's all good. Like, you know, I, I, I'm not, you know, they're not like horrible, but it, it's cool to see that you just evolve and you're in look, like, man, this is not, I always say no one bleeds at the end of these, you know, this is not surgery. Uh, just practice and do what you're doing, uh, start now. You, there's, you know, there's not some uh, 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 finishing school you go through in order to make good online video. If your intent is clear, and that is to give value, and you respect people's time and say, all right, I got something to say, my first take took me 10 minutes, and you look back at that and go, man, was there a lot of ramble in there? Was I, t you know, taking liberties with people's attention? Or is there a way I could have said that same thing in two minutes? Kind of like I'm doing right now. <laughs> but this is a stream of consciousness kind of family togetherness rant. But my intent is always to deliver value, to deliver inspiration to, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna say when I start these. I know what I wanna get across to you, but you have to leave yourself open to find new ways to get there. Kind of like, you know, comedians are that way, right? The way a joke develops is you go up with the seed of the idea, you, you kind of know the punchline, but something happens in the moment of a live performance where you're feeding off the energy of the crowd and you, you say things you can't predict or somebody makes a comment or somebody laughs at, at a little part of it you didn't expect and it sends you off uh, in another direction. And that's what changes the whole joke. Talk about Mike Lucas. Mike, Mike used to have, Mike was not like a jokey joke uh, comic. Mike had like, like what we call hunks, you know, like, man, he would act out, set it up and act out the different roles and, you know, hilarious, man, and take you on a journey. He had this famous bit about uh, his alarm clock, how he hated his alarm clock and, and he would do the impression of the alarm, ah, 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 and it was like, talk to him, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm hacking your bit to death, Mike. But uh, anyway, that came from Mike just going up with a seed of an idea and, and just letting it blossom, letting it happen, being an improv. And it's the same thing that we're all doing today. You see, we're all performers. And yeah, so it's a little harder than it used to be to, to hide in your, in your cave and do your work. But that's what the partner's about. So prospectors, prospectors have to be doing video. You have to get yourself out there. You have to be comfortable connecting. Uh, pioneers, same thing. Uh, 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 but partners, partners, you, you can be great at this and find ways to partner and you don't have to give those things up. Uh, but as a partner, you can also say, hey, I'm just gonna be behind the scenes. So I'll give you two examples. Uh, two partners from my own business. Uh, for five years as a freelance car copywriter, I was partnered with a guy named Ben Johnson, who was the first copywriting student I ever took on personally. So I had taught John Carlton's simple writing system for uh, six sessions. And 
then came to me and wanted me to coach him privately, mentor him uh, as a copywriter. And I said, what the hell? I, I guess I'm qualified to do that. Let's give it a shot. And started teaching him and he was just damn good. I mean, crazy good, right? But then I, I, I did with him what I, what I always do with everybody in EV and RFL now uh, in Supergroup. I started giving him leads of uh, you know, work that I couldn't take on or uh, when people ask me for recommendation. But <clears throat> Ben was uh, terrible, frankly, at communicating with these leads. He was like, Come, I'm like, dude, I, don't, I know you're not meaning to, but you, you really you sound like an asshole in, the, in these emails. Like I would have him BCC me, you know, so I could uh, coach him through the process. And I could, you know, it was just very clear, like that wasn't for him. Prospecting, you know, trying to massage relationships and just being good at that part of it was like, he had no interest in it. And so uh, because he was such a good copywriter and very fast and prolific, uh, it just made sense for us to start partnering, right? And it was the first time I was able to actually grow my business, scale my business beyond just me. And we, we kept on that way for five years. We did amazing work together. It, was, it worked out fantastic. So that was one kind. So if you're like, Kev, I'm never doing video. I don't want to get good at this. I don't want to uh, develop bits and hunks in, in, a, in a voice. And that's, uh, no, I'm not here to do, I'm a copywriter and I want to, you know, uh, I want to be left alone to do the work. Uh, that's okay. You can partner. You can be Ben Johnson, but you got to find your Kevin Rogers. You see what I mean? And so Ben at least was like reaching out and networking and saying, who can I get to mentor me? And he asked a, a mutual client that he was writing content for. Who writes your copy? Could, could you introduce me? Maybe would they mentor me? You know, so you cannot hide completely and, and only lurk and succeed in this business. You have to interact on some levels, but you, 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 you have to go test and try everything to find out what's for you. And that's why I say that everybody needs to be a prospector and try those skills, see what you can develop. Yes. Sometimes they're uncomfortable at first and you get better at them. Other times you find out, man, I didn't know that just made, it drains me. I don't like it. Uh, and, and just like you should listen to your instincts about people being full of shit. You should listen to your instincts about things that you just don't want to do. And, but you've got to try first. You've got to, you've got to uh, uh, push yourself into, that, into the deep end, into the cold water and go, nah, maybe polar plunge in for me. Let me figure this out. Okay. Uh, another partner I have, uh, a lot of partners who are really great at this. Uh, Angie Coley is a partner of mine uh, in RFL. Melanie Warren, both uh, uh, Melanie more recently and Angie. Uh, a few years ago, Angie wasn't doing video, wasn't um, uh, loving being on podcasts, even though she's a fantastic performer as a singer. Uh, this has been a, a new emerging skill for her and she's fantastic now. Love watching Angie on video. Amazing on podcasts. Um, she could do anything she wants. She could start her own podcast. She could, right? Anytime you're in front of Angie Coley, you're happy about it. But she developed that skill. She developed that comfort. Uh, uh, another partner, Rachel Mazza, is fantastically good at uh, presenting and being on video. I didn't know this until we were all together at a, a super group meeting uh, doing our 60 second sales hooks videos. And I have to share those with you someday. And, and so you can see uh, how all the supers did them. Uh, varying uh, degrees of comfort with video. Uh, April Dykeman, who uh, the camera loves and I think is, is so cool on video, hates doing video, uh, but you know knows it's effective, so finds a way to do it. Anyway, Rachel, turns out, has experience in front of the camera, and I never even knew that. So Rachel's now partnered with me uh, in Escape Velocity, and she's a dynamo on video. It's a natural ability for her or something she's developed, right? So all this to say, Push out of your comfort zone, uh, but listen to yourself, okay? Uh, and, and just try things. And look, Copy Chief, we create a safe place to try things and, uh, and we coach each other. And so with that, um, I'm excited to uh, talk about something new we're trying, what we're calling the mini, uh, uh, the mini workshop. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, let me let me go to it real quick. I think I have it open. I got everything open here. First of all, real quick, I want to I want to show you a couple things about how to use um, Copy Chief. Hex the um. Is this it? All right. Cool. All right. So there's the uh, prospectors. Um, uh, by the way, oh, check this out. Sorry, I'm like all over the place. I'm so excited today. Um, before I do that, let me show you some. If you don't know this, two ways to get around the form. Look, I know there's a ton of stuff here, and it can be like what, but it's pretty easy to find what you need in Copy Chief. If you go to forms, right, and you're looking, say, for a training, and you're like, uh. Where's that four by six thing um, Kevin talks about? And you're like, eh, right? And I know I get it. There's a lot. Of, and by the way, we're we are working on the dashboard is being retooled and is going to be re-released for you soon. And uh, that's uh, Jay's thing. Um, and uh, it's going to be really cool. Uh, maybe we see the problem and why things aren't better organized. Because <laughs> Kev can't even find his damn tabs. Um, but anyway, when you're here, here's a little trick. If you're on a Mac, uh, you see my screen, right? Uh, command F and then you just type in the thing you're looking for. So you go four by six, oh, boom, right there. Easily pops up, right? You go 60 second. Where's that 60 second sales hook training thing? Um, there it is. Boom. You just type in 60, right? You go, where's the, where's the feedback form? Uh, oh, feedback. Cool. Right there. There it is. Uh, where is, um, okay, dig. So super easy to find things uh, if you just use this in, uh, and you can even go as basic as say, um, just looking for categories and go, where are the trainings? Ah, there's the money skill trainings. There's a core copy training, you know what I mean? So just use that as a, as a quick way to get around. You can also use, you know, our search, but it ain't the best. It's part of Zen, Zen Foro. Um, do this though. If you're just looking for like, oh, what did uh, Angela post? I was wondering, you know, you can, you can just add her, start typing her name and, um, and it'll come up. Um, out. I see, maybe it helps if you spell it right. Um, there she is, right? So if I want to see what's Angela posting, but better is to do this, go to more, and then you can, you can bring up keywords. So again, you're like, oh, where's that four by six training? It must have been posted by Kevin, uh, this guy here, and, you know, give me, uh, and then you can even scroll down to, uh, you know, trainings, training videos, uh, but you don't even have to do that part of it, just search. And, you know, you'll find it quickly enough. I'm seeing all my stuff because um, uh, I have access to a lot of stuff you don't. But anyway, that'll help you uh, find stuff. All right. So um, there's Laura's uh, masterclass ready, uploaded for you. Um, I wanted to. Oh, oh so here's what the uh, dashboard is going to look like soon. Right. So you're going to say, I'm writing an email. Awesome. Then you click that. And all the trainings relevant to you writing an email are going to be laid out for you right here in the dashboard, right? Is that cool? So here's, of course, we'd start with Chris Orskowski's awesome uh, email training. Uh, you know, if you need to do pre-work on your, on your email, get your sales mindset together. Um, learn about your avatar from, from Allison Carpio. Uh, conducting research, you know, all kinds of cool things. Your KLT, no like and trust, 60 second sales hook, rebel yell, super quick ways to very effective free mail, additional resources. Uh, we'll be putting uh, templates in here. Um, we're making uh, templates, you know, uh, just our quick uh, PDF of our framework. So everything is going to be searchable in here by what you're writing. This is coming soon. We're working hard on this behind the scenes. It's going to revolutionize how you guys are able to use Copy Chief as a resource, right? Really excited about this. Um, uh, so before I get to the mini workshop, I want to just, um, that, uh, but I'm going to show that, uh, where's the general, let me just go to general discussion. I want to shout out, uh, 
to Ken, first of all, for asking the good question. Hey, this is, by the way, uh, we said there's no dumb questions or whatever. Like, if you're looking for something, ask, you know, and, and you, this is how you'll start making relationships and get so much help. Sales page 101, is there an ultimate sales page training? Great question. And, and thank you, Sean, for jumping in here like a hero and going, yep, use the four by six, exactly what, what I would have recommended. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, I came in and, and said the same and, and also pointed out um, Chris's uh, email training. Uh, and now, you know, Ken's making friends with Sean and Sean's offering to look at the four. How cool is that? An Agora copywriter from the UK willing to look over uh, new members uh, uh, four by six, man. This is copy chief in, 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 in all its glory um, in, in how we, we work together and give each other value. So salute to Ken, salute to Sean. Uh, and of course, all of our ambassadors who do this every day, volunteer their time every day to help people out like this. Beautiful, I love it. Um, um, so check it out, the monthly mini workshop. Here's a way that we can formalize how we work together and give each other value like this. Uh, we're doing, gonna do these mini workshops. So we'll just um, uh, give you a, a challenge, right? So this month with uh, Laura's training, you watch Laura's training, like I, I, wanna, I wanna get right in an email. Uh, and then you uh, take inspiration from Laura. Maybe you watch Chris's training and you look at um, how he frames out some of uh, his emails and, so, and look at the workshop we did after Chris's training and look how other people wrote their emails. Like get inspiration if you need guidance. And then uh, we just give you something to write about. So in this case, it's this Bluetooth garden speaker. Uh, I think Laura found this like super cool. What a funny thing to write about, right? Um, and you know, you've got some uh, product details right here about it. And uh, you know, is this all you need to write an email about this? What would your take be? What would your subject line be about this? What kind of angle would you take about it? What story would you tell about it, right? Uh, and then we're gonna just have fun critiquing each other, helping each other, and we're gonna award. Um, and so by the way, and you know, you know, use the research like, okay, uh, what, you know, what other research would you do to be able to talk about this product beyond what you get on this page? You know, is it, this is what I mean about getting to know yourself as a copywriter. Your, your unfair advantage is your own process, your own curiosity, the, your own research rabbit holes that you would go down uh, to, to, you know, learn your unique angle on how you would sell this, um, this simple little product, right? And so that's the, the, the beauty of the doing. And that's uh, why I love these mini workshops. All right. So have fun with that. Uh, and hopefully that'll give you impetus, purpose for watching more of the trainings. Uh, writers write. It's what we do. Just fun to practice. Help each other out. Uh, critique each other. There's not a formal uh, process for this. We're not going to have judges. And it's, you know, look, it's just we're all doing it together and uh and having fun with it but we are going to award um trophy points so we're, we're, we're also starting a new system where we're uh, awarding trophy points to you as a member and it's like think of it as like uh uh chief cash or something right you know uh points the more trophy points you get the more rewards you'll get so uh, it'll be things like, you know, uh, nobody writes alone t-shirts, uh, maybe, you know, special, um, uh, you know, meetups and, uh, and, you know, maybe we'll do a, a group call together or something, you know, we'll just come up with cool, fun stuff. We'll send, you know, uh, send you a book randomly or whatever. It's just about rewarding you for being engaged for putting in the effort to become a better copywriter and to help other people do the same thing because that's everything we're about here at Copy Chief. Sound cool? I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, awesome. So uh, real quick, if anybody, who would like to give a best thing? I always wanna hear from you guys directly on these uh, chats. Anybody ready with the best thing? Uh, especially if you're new, if you're a new member, if you've never given a best thing before, here's how it works. You just say, here's the best thing I learned recently. Here's where I learned it from. Here's why it was particularly uh, uh, applicable to, to me in my life right now. 
here's how I used it. And then you end with an if then statement. So if you're in this scenario, then try this and I think it'll help. And we will, we will uh, 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 clip out your best thing for you and send you a video clip of it so you can have instant authority content, share it on social media, um, go show everybody the badass you are with your cool ass uh, uh, best thing. Anybody got something they wanna share, come on screen with me and share a best thing. All right, we'll definitely do Angie. Angie's a pro at this. Who else has got one? Ba 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 ba. Ah, Lisa Perk, Camel Cash in the 90s. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like, except rewarding you for killing yourself with cigarettes. Remember Marlboro points were a huge thing. And people would like, <laughs> they'd save up for their Marlboro like racing jacket. And you're like, dude, how closer to you or to death now that you have that jacket? <laughs> you're you're going to look great in your coffin uh, with your Marlboro racing jacket. That's hilarious. A Marlboro racing jacket. <laughs> 50 points, new lung. Yeah, here's an iron lung. How much? <laughs> How many cartons do I have to smoke to get the free iron lung? Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, all right, nobody else got a best thing? Come on, you guys. You're being shy. We got a lot of people here. Again, man, go look at my old YouTube videos. There's no way to screw this up. Mother is, actually. All right, Alex has one. Ah, Krishan? Good. All right, let's do it. Do me a favor, raise your hand if you got a best thing, and that makes it easier for me to find you, and then I can bring you on. Yeah, vintage Marlboro merch. Gosh, I wonder. Would that be a trend? You see, you see like it, it's celebrities and influencers and their Marlboro jack. <laughs> what could be less like PC these days? Oh, I don't know. If, uh, if Gwyneth Paltrow is selling candles scented like her, her lady parts. Uh, maybe all the rules are being rewritten. <sighs> it's amazing. Uh, I could go to the rabbit. All right, Krishan, I hope I'm saying your name right. We're going to start with you. I allowed you to talk, but I'm actually going to promote you to panelists. So it's going to ask you permission to use your camera and your microphone. Copy that. How you doing? You got a camera? I do. I might have um, goofed it up and just hit allow to talk the first time. Oh, there you are. Oh, you're, oh that's Alex Penning. Why do I see Alex Penning? Hi, Alex. <laughs> I don't know why I see you, though. I'm going to send you back. Yeah, I don't really have any um, video. All options. right. That's cool. How are you, man? Good to meet you. Am I saying your name tonight, Krishan? Perfectly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling good. Just Where are you from? Yesterday, um, from America, I guess you could say. Um, but I was, born in, I was born in CT, born in Connecticut. You were born where? In Connecticut. Oh, okay, Connecticut, cool. What part? Yeah, um, Southeast. Southeast Connecticut. Connecticut. All right, cool. Yeah. My, the guy I was just talking about, Ben Johnson, was from New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, he, but... he always bragged about the pizza. Like they have some amazing pizza apparently now. Yeah, and it's everywhere. It's everywhere, almost like New York. Really interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, thanks for doing the best thing. I wish we could see you, but that's cool. It's um, audio works, and so <laughs> you heard yeah. the format. So tell us what's the best thing you've learned recently, and and how you're using it. Awesome. Um, so the best thing I've learned recently is related to um, writing um, better, faster, more intuitively. Um, and with less friction. And so what I learned is, yes, David, nothing is like New York, um, but adjacent, New York adjacent. Um, but what I learned is um, actually a, a meditation. It was a writing meditation. Um, it's, you know, it takes like five minutes to do. I learned it from Ian Stanley, if anyone's familiar with him. Um, he just did a, a writing challenge and part of an upsell of that was like this writing fast AF session. And one of the things that he taught was um, this meditation. It was useful for me, obviously, because um, I'm a writer, I write a lot. Um, this helps me write more, more quickly. Um, and it also helps me a lot um, with my habit of um, editing as I write, which is yeah. um, just a killer for me. 
So, or was a killer for me. Um, and so that combined with working um, in documents where the, um, you know, like the, the auto edits and the auto, like, um, where it shows you, like, your grammar mistakes and your right. spelling mistakes, like, turning those things off. Um, yeah. Those two things have been very, very helpful for me in just writing and, and not stopping, which is, you know, <laughs> Yeah. The awesome. Thing. Cool, man. Um, so, um, so meditating, kind of clearing your head, and then you go right into writing from there, kind of getting in a flow state. Yeah, um, it's a very specific um, visualization meditation, um, or there's a visualization component, um, but it definitely helps get into that flow state. Um, helps you relax. Helps you. Um, yeah, those two things, man. Cool. Awesome, man. So if then. If then, give us um, an closer. Awesome. So if you are looking to, um, if you also have a problem with editing while you write and you know that it messes up your flow and you know that you could be writing better copy from a more intuitive subconscious space, um, then I would definitely recommend that you check out Ian Stanley and find your way um, into that recording of his um, writing fast AF session. It'll help you out. Cool, man. Thank you, brother. It was great meeting you, and thanks for doing this. It was a good one. Likewise. Yeah. All right, cool. Let me figure out how to... I don't know how to send you back. Hold on one second. Uh, if I remove you, that's going to kick you off. Hold on one second. Sorry about this. Uh, I can just mute myself. Yeah, I might have to just do that. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, good one. Uh, yeah, my buddy Ian Stanley. I know he got heavy into meditation when he was working with um, Brent um, Charlatan. Uh, and, uh, and that's very cool. I know uh, Ian's into that and doing everything fast and making crazy money and spending 9k a month on rent. Um, and uh, upsetting people who don't agree with his philosophies on life. Ian is a, uh, is a, is a visionary and, and a funny dude on top of it. Um, cool. All right. Um, let's go to, uh, now we got a lot and I don't know that we'll get to everybody. Um, let's hear from Angie. Angie there we go. Holy, there you are. Hello. Hey, I'm working on setting up the studio so I can be live mic ready, like you said. Very nice. Oh, Look at that. Got like a, a ring light and the pro camera up there. So like nice. Yeah, it's all coming together. Gotta get me one of those ring lights. Yeah, it's pretty I got a spare one. I'll mail it to you. <laughs> Bring it to Austin. <laughs> oh, hey, we'll yeah. all carry them around and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like I'm talking about this a lot, but we talk about how the best source material comes from your life, right? That's the whole thing behind the x factor show at copy cheap live whatever you're doing in your personal life makes the most fantastic creative fuel for whatever you're going through so um many of you know i've talked about it a lot that i am volunteering now and i'm volunteering for a cause that is very close to my heart which is helping people to escape domestic violence situations mm -hmm. i work on the hotline and sometimes it gets really emotionally heavy and last week i had a bad week for like the first time in six months it was just Hmm. There, there were so many emotions and so many situations that are like, I was powerless to do anything. And I don't like that feeling because I am very much an overachiever and a let me step in and fix that for you kind of person. So last week was hard. And then um, at Kevin's suggestion, which I don't know why I didn't even think about it. I reached out to Robert Gibson, who's done some similar volunteer work and asked him, man, how do you, how do you cope? Uh, how, how do you do this work and, and keep getting up and doing it every day when it's really, really hard? Um, and he said something to me that just kind of blew my mind, which was, I can't fix your problem for you, but I can help you get one step closer to safety. And that just kind of changed the way that I looked at everything. I mean, not just the volunteer working that I'm doing, but working with clients, working with people that, that you and I coach through RFL. I can't step in and fix it for you, but I can help you get one step closer to where you want to be. Um, so if you are in a situation where you're struggling or you're having a hard time uh, seeing what the, the end result is going to be, seeing the solution, uh, seeing the bigger picture, remember, it's not about fixing everything all, of, all at once. 
if, if you're struggling to see the big picture and get to where you need to go, then focus on just getting one step closer. Mm. Whew. Angie, you're killing me. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's so simple and so profound. And uh, and that's what Robert's advice always is, you know? Mm -hmm. And by the way, Robert laid out a doozy, if ever, you guys haven't seen it in the general discussion today, uh, yeah. about, you know, um, you know, uh, yeah. So check that out and thank you, Angie. I think it's beautiful that you're doing this work. And, you know, what I'm, what I'm inspired about is that it's, it's, it's making you a, a better person, not just because you're willing to do a hard thing that helps people, but when it's very hard for you, instead of turning from it, you're leaning into it and finding new resources to help you overcome it. And once you're, once you're through that hurdle, it, it's not going to make it an easy thing to talk to people who are victims of domestic violence, but uh, it, it's going to increase your worldview in ways that I think we can't even imagine yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Robert said, you know, the phones were ringing before I got there, and they'll keep mm -hmm. ringing after I decide I'm done. But, you know, deciding to do the work now is what's important mm -hmm. and, and helping whoever I can. And, and that's for all of us, like help where you can, however you can. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you, Angie. Thanks. Man, the woman uh, never ceases to uh, impress me, blow me away, inspire me. Uh, really cool. Thank you, Angie. Um, all right, David Maswari. Let's see what's on David's mind today. Coming to us live. Uh, no video, David. Oh, hold on. There he is. All right. One second. Hey, big papa. Hold on. Let me just. What's up, brother? Hey. All right. So uh, let's see. Where do we start? So, two things. Kind of simple. The first thing, weirdest thing. Uh, about like a week ago, I decided just like. Now my, my screen is exploding. Uh, I decided to go, decided to go I, I, I decided to get back to competing in martial arts, MMA, jiu-jitsu, the whole thing. I just went on a diet like uh, about a week ago, like nothing but fish. I know it's weird, but nothing but fish. Hmm. In seven days, I dropped 13 pounds. Hmm. I, I, I can't tell you, like, it's the weirdest thing, but I decided little, little acts of self-discipline in my life are, are starting to, um, they're starting to kind of come together. You know, like uh, I only had one resolution for the new year and that was, you know, more self-control, more self-discipline and that's paying some dividends. So awesome. the second thing, and this is uh, copy related, so it's applicable, right? Uh, but I found like a really smart way to go about doing copy breakdowns. Mm. And that's kind of, that's really changing my game, like a, in a big, big way. Uh, I've, I've been working on a, a copy AI with somebody like, you know, which is, and that's the way they're going about it. The inputs are, are really interesting, you know, just kind of come up with uh, some sort of common themes about the mechanisms of copy. And I'm, I borrowed something like from Jerry Parent, Jimmy Parent, because, you know, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've, it's, I've, I've, been, I've been managed to break down about one email, one sales letter a day using this, this sort of like a, breaking down to its component parts. And I think, you know, from like two weeks ago to, to right now, like the way I just look at the way that everything is written, it's like a night and day difference. I mean, I really, you know, I, I can now see the commonalities between like really good copy, you know, and so, so mediocre copy. And it feels less intimidating. It feels more achievable and I'm seeing it in my writing, you know? Yeah. And, That's and great. The when you know, when you know what to look for, right? That really makes a difference. Yeah, you know, like uh, I remember, like sitting down and writing some emails over the last uh, couple of months, and you know, like one email taking me like like five hours. No, one email took me like two days. I was like, no, it's not right. When I actually sat down and and I looked at how emails or or how things are structured, I was like, oh, all right, and I've got it. I'm developing my own writing system. And, uh, you know, I know there's a million writing systems out there, but this one's, you know, my own. Yeah, you're, you're, you're developing what works for you. That's what the four by six is, is what, what I needed to, to get my first draft out. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know, I mean, there's still the problem of, uh, you know, like finding clients. But I mean, like, uh, you know, I know I feel like I have something to offer them as I get them, you know, which is kind of, 
the first year of copywriting, I'm kind of excited about this. The first year of copywriting was really just, you know, proving the model, like just uh, everything there is to know about the business. And after, it's just about one year that I've been in the world of copy. And, uh, you know, like at this point, you know, like now I kind of feel like I can, I've got like some, uh, the word came to me in Portuguese, bala na agulha. Um, I got something, you know, like uh, I got bullets in, in the chamber, I guess. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that sounds awful in English. Um, <laughs> that works. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so if then. Let's say what? I'm so sorry. if then. So if then, if then, yeah. So that's, you know, that's working uh, really well for me. The, the, the system of uh, like writing everything down in index cards, you know, I have it down to, it's coming down to a science uh, and it's working. I mean, it's really, really working cool, in, 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 in the workflow. So, 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 it, so this is where we can close. If, so if, if you are, if you are uh, looking uh, for two things, if you're looking for ways to take control of your control of your life, find tiny little, tiny little things to give you discipline uh, or control over things that you can actually change. And you'll see it reflect in everything else. Uh, Cause you know what your bigger goals are. You know, it's the little steps that I think that are harder for most mm -hmm. people. And the second thing um, I would say is, uh, you know, if you want to become a better copywriter, learn how to break things down to their component parts. And all of a sudden, uh, it's not going to look so overwhelming and your writing will improve drastically. The copy will almost write itself. Awesome. So. I love it. Thank you, David. Great share, brother. Thank you. All right. I love that. And we're having a theme here, I think, between Angie's and David's um, and um and even krishan which is you know instead of trying to figure it all out at once what is the next step how do we how do we get one step closer to what we're trying to do and that goes with the whole theme of this this whole chief chat uh which is uh it's a long game and if you're rushing to get to some imaginable finish line as a copywriter, you're going about it wrong. And that doesn't mean you have to sit back and read every book and, and you know, uh, writers write and we need to be doing, but um, we don't, you gotta be patient with yourself. And that's why I love being new at things, right? We're all, we're all new at something all the time. My new thing, you know, I've been trying to become a better singer, taking vocal lessons. And, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly seeing progress and going, ah, I, I kind of get how that person's doing that. Like just staying in key is such a challenge. Uh, and so step one is like being able to recognize what good looks like, right? And then it's kind of reverse engineering. All right, well, I'm nowhere near that now, but I can do this thing that I couldn't do before. So Krishan can now get in flow at will uh, he's practicing the ability to do that. Right. And what will that lead to the next ability? Um, you know, I've been, we, we, we got an electronic drum kit as the family gift for Christmas and I've been having a blast playing the drums and I have no instruction. I just sit down and I try to play along to songs that I've always loved and, and thought the drum line was cool. Like, you know, ACDC's back in black, that whole record, Phil Rudd, like, I'm, Love the drumming on that record. Super straightforward, just like funky as hell. Just like, you know, uh, 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 Motley Crue trying to play like Tommy Lee, you know? Oh my God. And just noticing the different styles. Like Tommy Lee is always like, uh, the hi-hat is always open. And just, so, you know, one step closer, every little thing you, just by observing. So now I'm obsessed with, I was in Nashville, uh, was it last week? And man, anytime I'm in a music town, I'm as happy as I can be. And I saw as much live music as I could. And I was obsessed on the, I just watched the drummers. Uh, I went to a jazz club and watched the, the jazz drummer. I went to uh, two blues clubs and watched the drummer. Very different styles. And uh, really took note of what they did and when and why and how that, you know. And so step one is just creating awareness, like knowing what to study. And that should be pure joy. That should be a joyous 
uh, endeavor because you're focused on something you're, you, that's inspiring you because you enjoy it. So now I could sit all day and watch uh, drum instructors on, on YouTube teaching, you know, talking about how to play songs, talking about um, the different, you know, ways to groove and ways to um, improve your timing and, and all that stuff. Cause it's just fascinating to me now. Right. And every time I go to sit down at the drums, even though I don't have uh, an end goal in mind or an agenda for it, it's going to be a little more enjoyable to me because I have a, a next level of awareness. And then I can have a conversation with a drummer that's much more interesting than it would have been before because I can ask them about their process that I understand just a little better. Right. So it's just fun to be new at things and, uh, the next step is always creating more awareness and doing enough of the thing to see progress. And that's what this mini writing workshop is about. That's what Bullet the Podcast is about. All the things we do in here that give you a, a reason to write are there to design to help us all move a little bit further in our own direction and help each other and support each other along the way. All right. So with that, let's talk to Jay, who's in a hot seat today. Uh, Jay Jackson, how you doing? Um, we got all these muscle dudes. What's up, Jay? What's up, how Kevin? How you doing, man? Good. It's good to meet you. Good to meet you also. I'm a huge fan. I'll say that. Really? Oh, man, I really appreciate that. And by huge, you mean you're, you're, you're stacked. That too. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at your page. I was like, damn, you know, I mean, you can't, if, why can't you make it as a model? Like, why do you got to sell anything? <laughs> oh man, my, my dad, he tells me that all the time, but man, since I've been studying copywriting over the past few months, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's like a whole world. I wish I knew about a few years, uh, 10 years ago. Cool. That's exciting. So give us some history. Uh, you, you're a fitness trainer, I, I, I guess. And now you're, you're, wanting to take it from one-on-one -on -one online like many have done before you? Is that, is that basically it, what, what, what led you here? Yeah, so in a nutshell, I've been an online fitness coach, nutrition coach over the past year. Um, do a little bit of in-person at the gym. And the biggest thing for me, I've dibbled and dabbled in different, uh, having different coaches in the fitness realm. But mm -hmm. I've noticed that there's a lot of tactics. You know, everybody's talking about different funnels. But I've started to notice that the copywriters of these big companies are really what's driving the needle, moving the needle forward for them. So right. I've never really understood how to message, how to put my messaging out there to get the right people into my business. And um, I'm just at that point now where, you know, I want to find something that's stable, a skill that I can, you know, believe in and be able to make predictability when it comes to my income. And I see yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, copywriting is, is not going anywhere. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah, and it just makes everything better, all business, communication better, right? It really is kind of like an ability to turn on the spigot when you can have an idea and express it and, and have it resonate. It's powerful. And, you know, the other thing I'll tell you, Jay, if you don't have it already, are, are you building a community? On, you said you've been coaching online on year, uh, for a year, so you probably do you like a Facebook group and things like that where people are, you're in dialogue with, with people you're helping? 100%. So over the past year, I went from zero to 1200 in my Facebook group and my sure. email list, I have about 2600. And so Fantastic. The past, past two weeks since I jumped into Copy Chief, I've been doing an email a day. Absolutely. Great, great. Action taker. I love it. <laughs> I got to say, fitness um, uh, pros are always really great at marketing because you take that same determination and work ethic that it took to, to build the kind of body you have into this. Yeah. And, and I see that that's very common that you excel at it. So yeah. I'm glad you found it too, man. It's exciting. Um, yeah. All right. So today we want to help you uh, look at this lead magnet. And again, just give us some history now of this. What's the purpose of it? Um, how's it new compared to other things you've been doing? And, and what do you want us to focus on for the review today? Okay. So prior, I was uh, pretty much doing a lot of advertisement, sending people from um, cold traffic, um, mini chat to a webinar. And the whole concept behind what my coaches had me doing is just messaging people inside of Messenger mm -hmm. to get them on a phone call. Okay. And it's basically like door-to-door -door sales, you know, because they don't know anything about me. 
unless right. they've been following me for months. Right. And it, it pretty much burnt me out. I wanted something that's a little bit more uh, steady where people already know me. They understand my beliefs and my concepts. And so by the time they jump on a call with me, they're more hip to how I structure things. You know, just the same way as your phone. You know, you have a four by six. I went through that, bought that, and I was like, man, this is amazing. Jumped inside a copy chief the same week. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Exactly. Nurture content. Give them, you know, have them meet you with, with some kind of commitment. $8, like show me you really want to learn something. Over deliver with value and the right people will want to go further. It's that simple, right? And then it's just a game of volume. Um, right. Love it. Okay, cool. So with this lead magnet, now how are people coming to this in your funnel? Uh, right now, it's organic. Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, um, my Facebook group. I'll do a Facebook Live video, five to 10 minutes, and offer that. They'll have to comment, so they have to engage with me, and then I'll send it to them uh, in Messenger. And um, then after they get this new lead magnet, because I had some, some help from some people inside of Copy Chief. Sorry, I can't remember you guys' names. <laughs> but um, I think Rachel Kraft helped you a little bit. Rachel, with it. phenomenal. Like, I... I tossed the other league mat that I had for over a year. And so oh, once people, pro. she is, once people opt into this new lead magnet, mistakes lead magnet, um, they have to go through my lead magnet to be able to book a call with me. And so that call is where I sell people. But w once we get done with uh, understanding, once I get a clear understanding on how to build a short sales page for my $19 product, then from there, um, I'm going to put that at, as the link at the bottom of my lead magnet. So they purchase that first and then um, they'll be able to jump on a call with me next. Okay, so cool. You, you kind of get the journey, the, the journey. Yeah, call. I do. Okay, oh. cool. Um, and so the, um, I want to look at it, but I just, because I kind of know my, my thoughts, I want to share about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so how is it resonating now? The, the uh, lead magnet. I actually just, I finished it up probably less than a week ago and I've already gotten, people are responsive to it. I've gotten 70 leads, it's all organic over Great. the past five or six days. I've had, I want to say about two or three people to book phone calls uh, just from the lead magnet and with the, the short email sequence that I have along with the lead magnet. Great. Book a call. And the big promise of the lead magnet is what? Um, them understanding the mistakes that they're going through as far as weight loss. And so I, I give them five different mistakes that, that people overlook. And then after my fifth mistake, I roll into my story and then give them the new opportunity, which is my um, unique selling mechanism, which is the uh, cyclical fasting. It's just carb cycling and fasting put together. Okay. Love it. And is that something unique to you uh, that you named that if somebody Googled it, they would lead them back to you? Or is it a little yeah. more general in the marketplace than that? Yeah, it, it, it all leads back to me. I have the okay. domain name and everything. Fantastic. Love it. Great. Awesome. That's important. Okay, cool. So let's take a look. Mike uh, posted it. You know, so everybody has been seeing it. This is the cover. Um, so this is the actual lead magnet. This is the page where they become to download right right I, and you can notice you'll notice that i sweet i tweaked the copy just a little bit after having more feedback and so i didn't tweak the copy inside of the top of the lead magnet yet yeah that's cool so, as yeah. long as it's uh congruent enough which it is yeah um okay cool so big promise common promise and so the important thing here jay is like people are going to resonate with you um, you're a cool guy. You're fun to talk to. Like, I trust you immediately. Just meeting you. I can tell you have good intentions. You, you're living the proof of the results of your own system, which, which are great. Um, I, I saw in the, in the, um, in here that you share a lot of before and after in, in these kinds of stories, I might consider putting some of that on this page. <clears throat> I love a simple page that does nothing. You know, you can't give people a million reasons to, decide if they want this or not. If you look at my 60 second sales hook page, it, it couldn't, it's all you can do is, oh, I'm in the, like Dean Jackson taught me, you know, a, a landing page for a lead magnet should be like a, 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 ho a number next to your hotel room. All you need to know is, oh, I'm in the right room and then walk in, right? 
Um, however, um, it'd be interesting to maybe put some of the, the proof, the before and afters and stuff on this page and, and test that. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that, um, and also maybe a, a, at least a picture of you, I think too, presented by Jay Jackson. Like, you know, this is, you know, you can be also the congruent thing they see. They know you from the Facebook group or they've seen you on a video. Like you said, right now it's all organic. So it'd be good for them to come to this page and know undoubtedly, oh, this is Jay's thing. This wow. is not him endorsing something else or he's not sending me into a weird place. They, they, they need to know this is, they're still with you because that you're the one they trust, right? Got it, absolutely. So that's a big one. Congruency, we call it congruency throughout the funnel with images, images of you, uh, logos, things like that, that they're like, okay, it's, it's a check that I'm, okay, I'm still in the right pay, place. So I would look to put your photo at the top of all of these. I'd like to see you here uh, in this uh, sharing space somewhere in this deck of the headline on both places. Um, and I think it's great, man. I, I think, you know, the, the shocking mistakes and all that, you know, truth about abs forever was the, um, the ad that couldn't be beat. You know, when, 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 when media buying was still in its infancy, I don't know if you ever saw that, but like, remember truth about abs was, I remember uh, Mike Geary was putting like a million dollars a month in traffic towards that simple little ad. And it was, it couldn't be beat. And it was just the simplest, or it was like the, the you know, what was the other one? The, uh, the, the one weird food that, that was the one that couldn't be beat. The one weird food that you eat that, you know, allows you to lose weight and does all these things. And, and people just couldn't resist that curiosity, right? right. So this has that similar curiosity that's really a, a effective. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're getting to them quickly. Uh, you, you know, I love it. I can scroll through here and, and learn uh, a lot about you. Now you're introducing yourself, telling your story. I love, I love you guys that are, that are super fit where I'm like, man, I would kill for the before photo. <laughs> You're like, look, look at how, I don't know how I lived like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was so embarrassing to leave the house. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> it kills me. But then you got some people you've coached who, you know, obviously a little more real world came a little further and uh, fantastic. So men, women. And so who's, who's your ultimate avatar? that you know who's been your best client up until now jay and i'd have to say men anywhere between 40 to about 45 that's mm -hmm. it that tends to be the sweet spot and they actually do have a family at first i didn't think about that but these guys normally they're they're um fathers you know so, so, so the dad bod thing could 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 really be a way to resonate for you right well, in fact my wife said the other day we we passed a sign on the street it said dad bod to rad bod. And to me, it was like, that's kind of passe, but she's like, that's a really good hook. So for her, it was like, she's like, well, I just, I know exactly what it means. It's catchy. And, and, and that's, if I had, you know, maybe she was hinting at me, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna stop in there. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so dad bod is something, obviously it is a good dog whistle. It, it, it's like, you know, immediately it was like, yeah, all right. It, it says it all. That your excuse is built in. Hey, I'm a dad. I'm busy. I got kids. I haven't been to the gym, but you, you do want to do something about it, you know? Right. So if, 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 yeah, definitely reverse engineer who's been buying up until now and think about them when you're writing. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, the next uh, thing you can do here to take this to the next level is to come up with what we call a big idea. And I, and I linked up for you, uh, let me give it to you. Uh, I was showing earlier how to, if, if you just go to the forum and, and type in, uh, do that find and, and type in big idea. Um, well, Todd has a training on. That's what it is, Todd, Todd Brown. Yeah, I looked at it. Yeah, yeah, check that out. And we, even, we do a bunch of, um, I'll tell you, that the heart, I'm gonna put it in the, um, in the chat here and you can click on it and have it open. Um, the thing about big ideas, man, it's, it's, it's one of the hardest things to really to even just comprehend. And you'll see, and, and when Todd came into our community, which are all smart, dialed in copywriters and did big idea critiques, um, 
still a lot of people had trouble understanding did they actually have a big idea or were they it was it just more like a headline or, or a bit of a hook right so you've got a hook in these five mistakes that's a good hook but right now there's nothing that says to me oh this changes everything like i i don't know if i know what this is now your unique mechanism contains that the cyclical what did you call it cyclical faster cyclical fasting and like you said you that's yours that's your unique mechanism they're only going to find you when they search that so i would say your next challenge watch todd's big idea training look at all the parts is it intellectually interesting does it have the unique mechanism all those all those ingredients and do some brainstorming and you can even start a whole thread about this and get some help from the chiefs um you know what would be your big idea that hey nothing's going to work until you figure out cyclical fasting you may have tried other kinds of fasting you may have tried all the fad diets extreme diets and you know the weight just comes back and blah 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 cyclical maybe it's something behind maybe it's not even like cyclical fasting itself it might just be one part of why that's effective what is the uh, i remember john benson great fitness writer had a, a great hook once it was called he called it the um Oh, it was like an on. Uh, what was it? The switch? What was it like? The the remember John Benson's? It was like the. Um, f he talked about the fat gene, which was a great one. But then there was just something else about the the, the switch. Um, hmm. um, oh, the metabolic switch. Yeah, I think he called it right. And it was just yeah. something in. So think about things like people that you know, increasing your metabolism, all these things that people relate to. They go, oh yeah, like you can. Anybody who's done a diet that is meant to increase your metabolism, you can actually feel it when it's happening, right? You get this, you're like, wow, I'm just like super hungry. And so you're eating, you know, all these things. Um, think about you, your, your clients and, and the things they tell you and the things they report that they feel like, I think it's working because of this and, and name it and, and then, you know, put your, put your science code on and go, what's the thing that's happening here that that really makes it work and and how can i phrase this in a way that almost tells you what it is but makes you need to go find out because it's you're curious that's 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 one thing that i was curious about if i were if i should put that unique mechanism the cyclical fasting towards the top of the the um lead magnet or where or a little bit below my story mm -hmm. because basically i just once they see my story, once they read it, it goes into cyclical fast and I give them some, um, some understanding of what it is. I, I even read the Eat, Stop, Eat uh, sales page with, with Brad. And so I took a lot of uh, his ideas and concepts on how he, how he would break people's beliefs about mm. why fasting works. <laughs> and um, yep. then from there, they click the link and they'll eventually go to my sales page to buy. Yeah, I, th I think you just like feel your way around it and, and mm -hmm. let it evolve. Like what's the next small step? So I would definitely test that. Okay. Again, I'd say the next step is I wouldn't rush to change it because you just released it and it's working and it's a good lead magnet. But, but my only, the reason I know there's a next level to this is it's just a common promise. You know, five mistakes is like they, they, can, they can Google that and, and countless pages will come up, right? So we're not unique yet. But because people like you and they're resonating with you, learning the five mistakes as you would um, point them out and tell people what to do is the value. It's you, Jay. It's not, the, it's not the five mistakes. And that, that's the good news. Cause I, like I said, this whole theme today has been how to have no competition is to go be all of you all the time in the biggest way possible. Right. Right. So that's really good news for you. And that means that you can, uh, you get to experiment and test and do all these things and none of it's going to set you back. You, you, right. you're, you, you'll always have you. And, and even if the, the ad, the hook isn't perfect, you're still going to get engagement and you're still going to be progressing, but you're going to get a little better every time and a little closer to it every time. And right. I think definitely nailing the big idea will be the breakthrough. And it, it may be calling out cyclical fasting directly. I think certainly anybody who's really striving to find something new and hasn't heard of that, um, it, that alone is going to make them want to click and find out what's, what's going on here. And then what's the promise we can make about it? Is it, you know, different from other types of fasting because you uh, don't have to fast as long because it, it, it fires your metabolism faster. It, 
gives you sustained energy where other there's dips in other one, you know, whatever it is, what are the advantages to cyclical fasting that other types of fasting don't have? So, um, you know, think of this, think of that, your unique mechanism and, uh, as your baby. And it's like, how do I protect this thing and, and nurture it to go take on life and be bulletproof, you know, because it's, it's similar. Yeah, I was, um, I love that because that's, that's one thing that I feel like does set me apart. I see a lot of trainers <laughs> that opt in as well because they oh, yeah. want to see what it is. But um, is, it, is it possible? I'm not sure how much time we have, but is it possible that we could glance over the, the short sales page that I have? Because I was just curious yeah. about how the bullet process works with features and benefits. Sure. Uh, which page is that? Um, it's cyclical fasting for slash mistakes. I believe I put it in there. I think, um, yeah, I think Mike posted it here earlier. I'm just trying to scroll up. Here we go. Got it. I mean, not mistake. Cyclical fasting. Oh, uh, cause that, yeah, that's just, that, the, that's the lead magnet. Uh, what's the sales page? I wonder if I can just grab it and, um, yeah, post just, it. just post it in there and I'll, All right, give me about 25 seconds. Is it just cyclical fasting? Well, I got sick. Oh, well, no, this, just... this, this particular sales page is um, it, it's going to be cyclical fast, but I don't know what the forward slash URL is, but I'll, I'll have it in about 15 seconds. Okay, cool. Uh, I just have to go inside of ClickFunnels and uh, grab it. Oh, here we go. Here I come, copy cheese fam. All right, about to drop it in now. All right, you'll see it. Cyclical fasting. Order page. Okay, cool. Here we go. I'll just take a look. Do that together. Today. Cool. Yep. Without constant hunger, complicated diet rules are forcing you to give up the food you love. So yeah, all the promises are there. I mean, it looks good. It looks legit. There's you. That's good. Um, here's what you'll get. And this is now for me to buy. This is the first. This is the twenty dollar product you were talking about. Uh, yes. Yep. It'll be 19. And then I'm thinking about putting like a, a workout routine on the back end. Yeah. 27 bucks or something like that. As a yeah. Workout. You could just do an order bump right on this page probably. Yep. 100%. Um, and then you could test the 97 upsell from there. It's a pretty common, successful flow. Um, yeah, dude, this is, this all looks good. How, how, how do you feel about the order page being a two-step with them not seeing the, the price up front? They'll have to enter their name and email before they see it. Kind of like a uh, oh, um, jump out of the cart and don't purchase. Right. So you can get some, some stick on, on abandonment. Yeah. Right. Abandoned cart. Um, I don't think that's bad. So right now, uh, that's what you're doing here. That They have to fill this out before they can see the... The price, yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you what? What kind of uh, abandonment are you seeing on that? Um, this is I haven't made it go live yet. I want to oh, okay. get a little bit of feedback on the bullets. I know I'm going to make some tweaks. I just um, wrote out like 50 of John Carlton's bullets, and I was like, I need to make a few adjustments to my bullets. <laughs> that's again. That's that's that philosophy, right? Do the work. You're not afraid to do the work. Um, yeah. I might ask for other opinions on this. Like I, I would definitely, you know, I would reach out to Mike Renard, who's my, my um, media buyer, my Facebook ads guy. Mm -hmm. He's more into the, the testing of these kinds of things. Like where do they put the price or, or you know, when to grab the email and, and all that stuff. Um, if anybody here is in the thick of testing those kinds of things, I, I would welcome them. I think again, it's just something to um, test. I think the price is right. I think you could even go to seven ninety seven, but I think nineteen dollars for and this is all a PDF. Do they get videos or anything with it? Uh, just all PDF, step by step. 
Like it's all laid out for them. Yeah. Um, I, I might talk a little bit more on this page about how it works. You know, you're just kind of mentioning it here, but I, you know, I, I want to feel like I'm buying something like a revolutionary way to, to eat and go about my business that, that I've never understood before, you know? And so I might spend a, a paragraph or two just explaining cyclical fasting and why it's different. The, the USP of cyclical fasting, you know? So would you, would you say I elaborate on both fasting and carb cycling or paint more? Of I, a wouldn't, story? I, I don't know that I, I would maybe say that you, you, you've probably heard of these and, and tried them uh, on their own in various ways. Uh, I've, I've combined them with, uh, with other elements based on the, my, my personal clients. Um, and, in, in, you know, this is the discovery. This is the breakthrough. And by the way, if you haven't done 60 second sales hook, it'd be really great to do it with this because the discovery is the hardest part for people, but you have it. It's the cyclical fasting. So it's identity, struggle, discovery, result. You've got the discovery. And, th and this is how you want to, the, the art of getting a good 60 second sales hook is getting your discovery where it's clear, it's proprietary, and you can see that the person did a lot of work to come up with it. So there's proof there, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I, that was some, basically a little 60 second sales hook type paragraph right here before the bullets is what I think would be um, helpful. Um, to see in the comments here what did David Power was saying. Yeah, I would just, if you can, uh, Jay, I would split test a, a one step versus two step. If you can just test it, split test. If you get enough traffic to it, just to see. Like okay. if, if people are just not wanting to give their email before they know the price and what they're getting into, then it's not gonna be worth it um, to have those, those non-buyer leads as opposed to, you know, obviously if people are more comfortable and they're ready to go based on what they see on the page and they're just, you know, if, you're, if you can break even on buyer leads, man, that's all day, right? Let's just put as much money towards it as you can to get free leads essentially. Yeah, after doing the research, just looking at guys like Thomas DeLauer and, you know, other guys that are, you know, giving out $19, $20 lead mag, I mean, not lead magnets, but eBooks, they, they don't do the two-step. But um, I'm pretty sure they retarget. I think I even seen Thomas DeLauer retargeting after. Yeah, that's the key too, right? Is if you're going to have Facebook ads, YouTube ads, other things in place where you can make, make use of that pixel, um, awesome. And you can start collecting that now, but if you if you're not in a, if you're not set up to have that pixel fire when they hit this page and when they and when they give the email um, and and create lookalike audiences and retarget and all that stuff yet, then I would just be going for the sale. Got it. And, and look to say because I think that the more immediate challenge, the bigger win is going to be. How can I make this page? you know, uh, convert to where $20 seems like a dream come true for, for all I'm promising. And, and let that be the guide that, that makes you, forces you to get the copy up to the level where it achieves that rather than this potential someday idea of if I retarget, hopefully it'll, and it, you don't know those numbers yet. That's the immediate result you, you can get is how's this page converting on a $20 offer. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool, man. This was great. Um, I hope it was helpful. And I appreciate it. You, you're an action taker. And man, again, like I always say this, but you doing a hot seat like this helps all of us in a big way. And so what I would do now, Jay, is uh, start posts for both the sales letter and if you want the, the, the landing page for the lead magnet. And you can, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, We'll, we're going to clip this out, this this hot seat, and we can provide you with the link to that clip. And if you want to post it at the beginning of the those threads to say, hey, if you want context, I was on the hot seat. These were the takeaways and the things I'm working on. And from there, let's all continue the discussion. What do you see that I could improve? And just use your own filter on the feedback you get. Some of it will be resonate. Others will be like, mm. but there's no bad advice. It's just different people's takes, you know, so. Absolutely. That's how yeah. we all grow. And, and, and if you'll report back the results, that's how we all get smarter about what's working. Oh, I will. <laughs>
100 percent i awesome. I, I appreciate this kevin it was it was great it's my pleasure man it's great great getting to know you and uh i can't wait to see how it does for you absolutely all right now i appreciate it all right thanks jay thanks everybody great chief chat appreciate you all and we'll see you on the next one bye-bye